So glad you're here today. If you're new or if we don't have your information, if you can fill this out, connect card, um, you can put it in the offering pan. If you'll tell them out, or you can give it to them at the desk and they'll give you a gift. We have a, we bribe people for information. Uh, give them a gift. We got a mug for you and some stuff, so that's good. Uh, also, if you would like to give electronically, this will be on the screen when we get, when we take our offering. And thirdly, we have something new that we're trying today. Uh, we have a QR code that will bring up all of my uh, scriptures from my message today. If you did not get that when you were coming through the door, if you didn't get an opportunity to scan that with your phone, all you do is take your phone out with your camera, hold it over it. These smartphones really are smart. And it'll pop up. It won't say take a picture. It'll just say that it'll, mine said QR code. And I clicked that little yellow line. And it went to our website where my scriptures are listed. So we're going to start trying to do this. Also, um, we'll, hopefully we'll have this in the pew next week for you that you could just pull out if you don't have it. So if you don't have it, we'll get it. We'll have some ushers with that to, for you to scan uh, before I preach. So kind of cool. Um, backpacks. We've got backpacks for Vacation Bible School. Uh, if you'd like, we have a sign-up sheet. Also, if you'd just like to buy a backpack or you'd like to buy 10 backpacks or whatever, uh, backpacks are $35 a piece. And that will. We're going to, on Vacation Bible School night, we're going to give away the first 100 kids we're going to give a free buy backpack amen. to. So, amen. Um, amen. So, amen. There. Uh, so we're pretty excited about that. That's the end of... End of July. We're going to try to be the last one before they go back to school. Amen. Is that it? Is that all my announcements? Amen. Let's stand. Thank you all for being here today in the house of the Lord. I'd really be lonely if it wasn't for you because uh, I'd be here. <laughs> that was supposed to be funny. <laughs> you know what? If you've got to tell somebody it's funny... Don't you just love it when somebody says, I want to tell you a joke, it's really, really funny. I said, look, you just tell the joke, Jack. I'll decide if it's funny or not. You know? So, all right. That was, I, I didn't say it was funny. I said it was supposed to be funny. So I, I'll, I'll work on it. If you're comfortable, join hands with your neighbor. We want to pray this morning. Father, we love you. We just thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your goodness. Opportunity today. We thank you for the opportunity to come together and worship with family today. I just pray your blessings on this service. Blessings on our worship, on the message, on each heart in this room, that you would help us just to open up to you and to give our all to you today, not holding anything back in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen.
Father, we just thank you this morning for all you've done for us already up on the cross in that empty tomb. Because of those two things, we have forgiveness and we have life eternal. And we just say thank you for that amazing grace. And Father, we want to respond to that amazing grace right now by saying we love you, we simply trust you, and we want to show that in our obedience to you that we would give back, Father, just a small part of all we have from you. Take this tithes and offerings and use it all for your glory this morning, Father, that this church would be a lighthouse to this area, to our city, to our state, to our world, that we would do one thing, and that's lift up the name of Jesus. And everybody said, you can be seated. Grace, God's grace. 
to the day that you recognized your sin and called upon Jesus out of your desperation knowing you were separated from him and he heard your cry and you were saved marvelous grace of our loving Lord grace that exists our sin and our guilt yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled let's sing this without the band at all grace, signatures grace
was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How and maybe even your faces to heaven. I have been told you never know what you may see up there. But the holy presence of God. So if you're comfortable, just raise those hands. And we're going to step back and let you just sing church. Let's worship. Amazing. Right at this time, it's time for Super Church for our kids. Once again, I just appreciate those leaders who week after week sacrifice their worship time that these little ones can hear about the Lord and how much He loves them. Tell me that's not great. Isn't that awesome? We think about the grace of God. Isn't God good? This morning I was reading scripture and thinking about the difference between mercy and grace and those and those things. And I know you shared this just a few uh, weeks ago, very, very well. But I know what I deserve. I deserve hell. I know me. And he knows me. And yet he loves me. It blows my mind. And if I can be really sort of blunt, he knows you too. And he loves you. And those of you watching, he knows you and he loves you too. So as we prepare our hearts to hear from the Lord this morning, we're going to sing about the goodness of God. Dana, will you lead us, please? I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me in all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so
song uh, that sums up a whole lot of my life right there. All my life, we've been faithful. <laughs> we've been faithful all my life. Yeah, all my life, we've been so, so good. So if you want, um, I hope that you got a chance to scan the QR code. Next week, I'll have a card in your pew and you can do it, but um, if not, scriptures are on the screen uh, and we'll have those up for you. We're starting a new series this week, starting on grace. I'm so thankful you're here today. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Ben Stamper. I got the privilege of pastor in this church and uh, God's doing something pretty amazing around here and I'm glad you're here. Uh, I'll just We're just looking for a few more people that would like to be a part of it. So this morning, I'm going to talk about God's grand plan. Um, got lots of scripture. Again, that's why I wanted to give it to you so that you would have it. And uh, I, I know there's sometimes that scripture challenges our belief structure. How many of you have been confronted with scripture before and you're like, oh, that's not what I have been taught. That's not what I was 
told, or that's, I was told something, you know, we interpret that, you know, if, or maybe even challenge your, your theology. Um, I think it's so important to make sure that we look into the Word of God to find uh, our belief structure. And if, it's, if our belief structure doesn't line up with the Word of God, then what do we need to do? We need, to, we need to do one of two things. We need to, one, change our belief structure or change Bibles. Not that's going not to gonna change that much. From thee to thou is all that's going to change it. So, so our, when, our, when we're confronted with Scripture that, that, that hits up against something of ours, then we, we have a choice of what we want to do. Second Corinthians got, again, lots of scriptures. 2 Corinthians 3, uh, verse number 6. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. So I want, just as a jump off point this morning, just to let you understand, just to give you a, a start here. The day that the law was given, 3,000 people were killed. The day that the Spirit was poured out, 3,000 people were added to the church and lived. That's our contrast this morning that I'm going to take, that I'm going to walk us through. Is the, the, the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. You see, we are all ministers of the gospel. I spent a few minutes on that Wednesday night. Um, those of you that would like, come on Wednesday nights. We have a great time. 5.30, we have uh, potluck dinner, and then we, about 6 or so, we gather and pray a little bit and spend some time in the Word. And it's supposed to go to about 6.30. Usually it goes about 6.45 or 50 or 55, um, depending on how much, how anointed I feel like I am and inspired I feel like I am. You know, sometimes I talk a little longer, but... Um, talking about the word. So, but the old, we're all ministers of the gospel. Look at your neighbor and say, you're a minister of the gospel. The Old Testament is Jesus concealed. The New Testament is Jesus revealed. So today we're talking about God's grand plan. You, we, you, we can know God's plan for our life. And I think that's a a very important thing to understand that we're not just supposed to uh, chain the Bible to the pulpit and it never leaves. We're supposed to have a personal relationship with God. You can have that. Amos 3 and 7. Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. Old Testament, again, remember? He said, surely God does nothing if he's not going to tell his servants, the prophets. And then John 15 and 15, in comparison, I no longer call you servants. Because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I've made known to you. Everything I've gotten, I've given to you. Because you're no longer servants. Now you're friends. Old Testament, New Testament. See the difference? John 16, 13 through 15. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. The Holy Spirit leads you to all truth and shows you things yet to come, according to Scripture, right? So then I got... Again, several verses here. I'll, I'll get into, I'll preach here in a minute, but um, I'm letting the word, the, the Lord said, let the word preach. Okay, I will. Daniel 7, 27 and then 28. He said, I don't need no help. I wrote it, son. My bad. Yes, sir. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be handed over to the holy people of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will worship and obey him. This is the end of the matter. <laughs> Amen. 
This is the end of the matter. We ain't discussing this any further. So if, if, if you were a football fan and you were raised in the South, then you might enjoy this next statement more than some others. The Saints win. Saints win. That's what happens. This is the end of the matter. It's going to happen. Now, I want to just, I want to read all of this, but it's, it's, it's several verses. Um, let, me, let me do it. Revelation 1, uh, sorry, 21, uh, verse number 1. Then I saw, I'm going to try to read quickly. Uh, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost <laughs> from the spring of the water of life. There's like 63 messages that I've, that I've that are in the middle of all these verses right here. It's just, it's amazing. That's why I didn't want to leave any of it out. Those who are victorious will inherit all of all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Again, this is New Testament. Daniel's already told us it's done. This is the end of the matter. Right? It's done. So, um, let me wake my phone up because I don't have this one on my notes. I think you have it on yours. Isaiah. Oh, come back. Here we go. Isaiah 46. We have that verse? Chapter 46, verse 10. No? Good. I, I'll read it to you. It's fine. I, I, I didn't. I, I messed it up. I make known the end from the beginning. What I have said, that I will bring about. What I have planned, that will I do. God has said, God said, I've made it. I want you to understand. I've made it known the beginning from the end. And what I've planned is going to happen. We can know his plan. His plan is a new heaven, a new earth. His plan is a, it's a family of God. That's his plan. His plan is for us living together forever. You ought to look next to you, look across the aisle. That's why I keep preaching on repentance and forgiveness. Because heaven's pretty big. But you might bump into them once in a while and you might get a bad attitude. So go ahead and forgive them now. Big picture. Let's look at the big picture just a minute. Let's back up. Let's take an eternal, from a, from a little more per, eternal perspective of the whole thing. Let's look at the very beginning. We find creation in, in Genesis 1, chapter 1. We find in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. So we find through this the listing of he created the sun, the moon, the stars, the rivers, the lands, the animals, family. He created man and all of this. In verse number 31 of Genesis, he said he saw that everything that he had created and said it was very good. So in verse 26 through 28, he gave man rule and dominion over these things. Let, let's read. We got that one? No, you got the next one's Romans. Okay. Let me just, let me read you the end of this. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the earth. So God gave man dominion over everything. Stay with me. We, I promise we're going to get somewhere. Then we have what we call as the fall of man. We have the sin that came involved. All of a sudden, we find something that was not so good. And now there was sickness. And now there was disease. And um, Frank and I were Frank and I were walking around the block praying the other day, and we um, a, a gnat or a fly or something flew by me and got oh it was a little cluster of gnats that we went to and we, they were right on the sidewalk and we had to walk through them because we couldn't walk around it was on the sidewalk and um, I was like Adam and Eve right there 
They did it. They caused this. So, all of a sudden, mankind and crea- all of creation now is suffering, has got pain involved. There's, there's poverty and wealth. There's hunger. There's, uh, there's hatred. There's war. There's sin. There's death. There's abuse, addiction, uh, divorce, separation. The very first family was actually uh, very much like the rest of us. It was dysfunctional also. I've already figured it out. I'm the reason my children will have to go to therapy. And that ain't even funny. That's just, no, I'm just kidding. That's the truth. You can try all you want, but next to the word dysfunctional is probably your picture of your family. Oh, no, you don't remember. Okay. All right, good. My bad. My bad. I was just kidding. So we've got Cain and Abel. First two children born that were listed in Scripture. And what did they do to each other? Abel was probably a whole lot like me. My brother was two years older. And I was the meanest, honoriest. My dad and mom called me a banny rooster. Now, I don't even know what that means. But some of you have been around long enough and you in the country enough, you know. I, I think it's the little one that nobody's ever told him he's little. Because for those of you that were here, my, my brother's 6'5", and it's, I mean, he's always been bigger than me. Second grade, they bought him size 8 men's cleats at a yard sale. Second grade, size men 8. Still got to pray over that. I never was 6'1". I wanted to be so 6'1", so bad. He's 6'5". I'm like, what? Anyway. So Cain goes out and kills the banny rooster. I'm just kidding. I don't know that Abel was like that. But he killed his brother. Why? Because they were living in a fallen sin state. Uh, They had a sinful nature. uh, Genesis 6 and 5 says this. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So what God did, God looks around and sees the fact that sin is growing. Romans 5 and 19, we have that one. For just as through the disobedience of the, next two words, one man, Adam, the many were made sinners, that's us, so also through the obedience of the one man, who? Jesus, the many, that's us, will be made righteous. Just as through the one man Adam we all became sinners, through the one man Jesus we can all become righteous. Fair? So now, when we look at the disobedience of man, it went for about 1,500 years from the time of Adam to the time of Noah. Actually, it's a little less than that, but the, when it, the scripture says that the sin was multiplying. It was growing. The corruption and sin had filled the earth. You see, in the beginning, God put there that seed would produce after its own kind. Okay? Seed produces after its own kind. When you plant corn, and you go harvest, what are you going to get? Hopefully, you get corn. Hopefully, it didn't die. But if you go plant a tomato and go out there and get ticked off because you did not get corn, who's the problem? I just can't make you say you're the problem, can I? You're not going to do it. So, 
the problem isn't the seed, the problem is what we planted. It produces after its own kind. When in the wild, the only reason that, those of you that are hunters, the only reason we get much of a chance to kill a big buck is because it's mating season and they come out from where they stay all the time, hidden, and they come out because it's mating time. But once they mate and that doe has a baby, what does it have? It's a little deer, right? Am I, am I being too plain right now? We reproduce after our kind. You see, Adam's sinful seed produced Cain and Abel. Man multiplied and so did the sin. God gave man dominion and as he kicked him out of the garden, so when they submitted to sin, they submitted their authority to sin. So not only were they corrupted, but all of the creation was corrupted. Now there's earthquakes, diseases, there's wars, there's murders. Man messed up. Don't blame God. Well, why does God let this stuff happen? Don't blame God for what man did. Well, I don't know why God just lets this so much, so much war and so many people dying. And why do you let this pest, this, this plague, this, this um, a pandemic come along? Why did, why did he let this happen? Don't blame God for what man did. But God has a plan. God has a plan. You see, in Genesis chapter 5, 6, sorry, we find the flood. So the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth and that every inclination of the faults of the human heart was only evil all the time. So the judgment came to wipe out and destroy evil. Genesis 8 and 21. Two chapters later, the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, never again will I curse the ground because of the humans. Even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood, and never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. God gave judgment, and man just automatically lined up. Everything was good. Just towed the line and said, no problem. Right? No. He gave judgment and he says, I'm going to not destroy them again, even though every single inclination of their heart is towards sin. The problem was sin was still inside the man, it's the sin nature. As the flood waters receded, mankind got a new start. But just as man began to multiply, sin again began to multiply. So he, God started over. He started over with Abraham. God called him out and said, come out. So here's a fun fact. Noah lived 350 years after the flood. And 400 years after the flood, the world was corrupt again. The problem was the sin nature. So in chapter 12 of, of Genesis, he spoke to Abram and said, leave your country and go, and I'm going to bless all the people because of you. So then Abraham leaves. He has Isaac. Then Isaac has Jacob. Jacob has 12 children. That's where we get the 12 tribes of Israel. So their names are the 12 tribes of Israel. Then one of those 12 was Joseph, and Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers because judgment works and changed their nature, and they were no longer mean. They sold their brother. Exactly what was it worth? Ten sheep? A hundred? They sold him. Because dad liked him a little more and gave him a colored coat. So the brothers, Joseph was sold into bondage in Egypt. He was rejected. But then a famine came and salvation had to come and it came through Joseph. And then all of a sudden they went back into bondage in Egypt. 
So then God said, okay, I'm going to get them out. I'm going to get Israel out. I'm going to get my people out there. They're 400 years. He sent Moses to them to lead the biggest jailbreak in history. Two million people walked out of jail in one night. They walk out. They are approximately 40 days from Mount Sinai. Now, I don't know how long it takes two million people to walk to the distance of Mount Sinai, but in 40 days, they were there. God spoke to them, don't touch the mountain. God wants to talk to, my, talk to his people. He, Moses comes off the mountain, and his face, and his, his, he's glowing so much that the children of Israel were scared. And they said, cover yourself with a veil, and furthermore, we don't want to talk to God. Just let him talk to you. So Moses is up there talking to God. <laughs> and they say, you know what we want to do? Exodus chapter 24, verse 7. We will do everything the Lord has said. We will obey. So they told God through Moses, we don't want to talk to God. Just give me the rules and I'll do them. They rejected relationship because they said, I'd rather just have the rules. But you see, there's still this one problem that we haven't dealt with yet. It's called sin. Exodus 31, God gives the people the tables of stone. Let me find this verse. I don't have this verse on my page. When the Lord had finished speaking to Moses, 31, 18, when the Lord finished speaking to Moses, he gave, the, gave him the two tablets of the covenant law, the tablets of stone inscribed by the finger of God. When the people saw that Moses was so long up on the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods, and we will go down, we, who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. And then verse 25, Moses saw the people were running wild and that Aaron had let them get out of control so he so become a laughing stock to their enemies. And he said to the, said at the entrance of the camp, he stood at the entrance of the camp and said, he said to the Levites, whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And the Levites rallied to him. Then he said to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, each man strap a sword to your side. Go back and forth through the camp from one end to the other, killing each killing his brother and friend and neighbor. The Levites did as Moses commanded, and that day 3,000 people died. God gave the law. They said we'll obey the rules, and God gives them the rules, and they've already broken them. Because they rejected the relationship, they said, I'd rather have the rules. But I thought rules brought us to God. I thought rules brought us closer to God. You see, judgment didn't bring them close to God, and rules wouldn't bring them close to God. Judgment wouldn't bring righteousness, and rules wouldn't bring righteousness. Furthermore, they came out of Egypt laden down, burdened down with gold and silver and jewels and all this stuff. They had 400 years of back wages with them. And so now, let me say this, the blessings of God wouldn't even bring righteousness. Hmm. So let me just ask you this question. Here, I'm going to challenge you a little bit right now. Why are churches trying to tell us how bad our sin is to make us stop sinning? Judgment didn't make us stop. Blessings didn't make us stop. Uh, the law didn't make us stop. So why do we have people getting up and telling us, you're doing bad, you're doing bad, you're doing bad, stop. That doesn't work. That doesn't bring righteousness. As a matter of fact, it's actually anti-Bible. So let me just say this as kindly. I'm not going to raise my voice. I'm going to say this as kindly as I can. I'll look at the camera. I won't look at any of you. If you attend a church like that, you should get out as quickly as possible. Because that church is not doing anything to you except making you worse. That's not God's plan. You can't try your way into heaven. 
somebody. You can't get good enough to get into heaven. But you're not trying hard enough. Trust me, I am. Anybody ever felt like you just tried real hard and you just, 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 just couldn't work? Matter of fact, watch this. This is, I'll, I'll tell you this quickly. Uh, my, I was talking to a, a mentor of mine and I, I said, I just really feel like I got to have a breakthrough. He said, I'll tell you what you need to do, son. He said, I need you to pray three hours a day for the next three days and you're going to get your breakthrough. So I did, buddy. I did. Third day, I'm in the middle of my sanctuary. I'm in the middle. I'm, I'm praying. I'm actually, I think I was up front. I'm pounding on the altar. I'm doing everything I know to do. And it's about two and a half hours in to that three-hour prayer meeting, and I was so mad at God for not doing anything because I'm trying hard. I got up and left. I know, I know. You think I didn't do it. I didn't finish the rules. The rules don't work. The rules don't bring me into righteousness. Because there's still a problem. I am the problem. So when I pray, I don't pray, God, help me to keep the rules. God, bless me so I can obey. God, don't give, give me the... I don't pray those things. What I pray is, God, change me. Change me. Don't just roll my sins ahead. It's not enough for you just to take my sin away. Because he did that. He washed the earth clean with water and sin multiplied. Deal with the problem. Deal with the sin nature, God. Romans 3 and 21. But now, apart from the law of righteousness of God, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. When you give more law, it brings more death. Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, 40 years in the wilderness. They continued to do the things they weren't supposed to do. Again, I got 50 more verses here. I don't even know what page of my notes I'm on. I got four more pages of notes. It's five till. Good thing I got next week. Deuteronomy 28 says, this is what I'm going to do if you obey. I'm going to bless you. Okay? Don't have time to read this verse. It's in, it's in our notes. And then in the verse 15, it says, here's what's going to happen if you disobey. I'm going to give you curses. I'll bless you when you obey, and I'll curse you when you don't obey. How many of you feel like you live under those rules today? I know that if I do this, then God will bless me. And I know if I do that, then God's going to curse me. It, I mean, I got a couple of hands that went up. I'm, I'm really asking us to be transparent for just a minute. How many of you feel like you live that way? That is Deuteronomy. That is Old Testament. The problem is the sin inside of man. Deuteronomy 31 and 6, 26. Do you know why God gave the law? Do you know why he gave the law? You ever looked in Scripture to find out why he gave the law? Deuteronomy 21 and 6. Take this book of the law and place it beside the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God. Yes, put it in the ark of the covenant. There it will may, remain as a witness. That's a witness against you, not for you. God gave the law to prove you couldn't do it. Yet we're still trying to be blessed. We're trying to keep away from the curses. Yet the almighty God gave the, re gave the rules to prove you couldn't do it. And they're going to stand there against you going, ha, 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 ha. Second Corinthians 3 and 7 says the ministry that brought death, verse 9, the ministry that condemns men, written on stone. I certainly don't have time to read this one. Second Corinthians 3, 7 through 18. Verse 17, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all who have unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory and are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, 
which comes from the Lord and who is the Spirit. Read that whole verse. It's, it's just amazing. Colossians 2 and 14. Having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness. Mm, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He's taken it away, nailing it to the cross. The purpose of the law, Romans 5 and 20, the law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. The law was brought in so you would sin more. <laughs> I've got 30 minutes left on this message. I don't want to let you go home feeling bad. But I'm going to leave you with the law was brought in so you'd sin more. But where sin increased. The reason God brought the rules was to expose the fact that sin was going to grow without him. Remember, there's one dude on the white horse. There's one hero in this story. So where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Grace increases in the new covenant because sin is exposed and then we get to put grace over top of it. Amen. I got to stop. I, I don't, I, I can't even. Just one more. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I got to stop. I can't, I can't. I don't have, I don't, I can't do it. Let's stand. I do want to, I don't, I don't want to leave you um, feeling worse, but I want you to know that we'll pick up on this verse next week. Pop up that verse, babe, 6, 14, you got it right there. Let me leave you with this one. This is a better verse to leave you on. For sin shall no longer be your master because you're not under the law, but now you're under grace. Sin doesn't have to rule us anymore. It doesn't have to be our master because we're no longer under the law. We're under grace. Again, if you didn't get the scriptures, when you go out, you can scan the QR codes. You'll have that. You can have it all week. You can, you can read ahead and not have to come next week. Okay, I already heard it. I heard it this morning. They said, oh, here's your message. I'll just go home. I just don't need it. I got your message. I like it. But look at the verses. Look at the scriptures. Read them. Ask Holy Spirit to talk to you. It's his word. It leads us to him. It shouldn't lead us to the more scriptures. It should lead us to relationship with him. Growing and, 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 and maturing in his word. Let me, let me challenge you with this. If you are at the same place in spiritual maturity today that you were 10 years ago, let me ask you why. Has the world stopped learning? Do you think you've added a few things to your tool belt in life? Then shouldn't we continue to grow in our relationship with God and in our spiritual maturity. Yes? So I want to challenge you this week. Go look at the scriptures. Read them. Ask Holy Spirit to talk to you. Ask Holy Spirit, what is what is Ben really trying to say? We're no longer under sin. Now we're under grace. Amen. Bow your heads if you would, please. Lord, we come to you now and I guess I'll just
say it like this. I don't feel like I did very good because I didn't get done with it. I didn't get to the end of it, of giving them grace. But I pray that you'd just touch every heart in this room. I pray that you'd touch every, every spirit, every soul in this room, Lord, that you would touch them and that you would begin to stir up our hearts pray that you'd plow up, according to Scripture, plow up the fallow ground, God, that we would be good ground to receive your word. The seed that we're going to talk about, or that we did talk about, we're going to, that we would take that seed, that perfect seed from you, and it would be inside of us, and it would be a place to grow. Pray that you'd just touch our hearts today. Prick us in the things that we're doing after the sin nature. Make us aware, just like you said your scripture would do, that it would, you'd make us aware of the things that we're doing that don't please you. Father, I ask that you'd forgive me. I, I want to please you. I want to please you in everything that I do. And Lord, I pray that you would help us over the next several weeks as you open up this concept, open up this principle grace in our lives. I really believe this very possibly could be the most important concept I'll ever teach to your people. And I pray that you touch our hearts to receive it. And just remaining for just a moment in a posture of prayer, if you've never given your heart to the Lord, if you've never made him your personal Savior, today grace is for you. Grace is for you. If you've never done that, would you just slip your hand up? We want to take care of that today. Anyone? All right. How about those that would say, you know what, Ben, it's, <laughs> sometimes I, some of you raised your hands already to this, but. Sometimes I just look at the rules and want to try to make the checklist and, I, and I'm living a life trying to be blessed and trying not to be cursed. But I know that's not what Scripture says for me. I know the New Testament has more for me than that. Would you just slip your hand up? Thank you. Amen. Thank you. And then if there's anyone that would like to join us in a more formal manner of joining our church family, we'd love to have you do that. Open the altar is always open. But I want to pray for you, those of you that lifted your hand. Father, I just speak grace over these lives. Lord, it's no longer about performance, it's no longer about do's and don'ts. It's just about being your child. And I pray that you'd just speak grace over these lives, that you would help us to change from a performance mentality. We're not trying to do so that you will applaud. We be, we am, <laughs> and you applaud. You love us just the way we are. You love us because of who we are. And we love to, and I thank you, Lord, for that grace that's on our lives. I pray that you would just increase grace. I pray that you would just awaken us to your grace today and this week. open the altar if you'd like prayer if you'd like to join our church we'd love to have you as we sing this song there is a song that calls to my heart there is a friend that won't let me go dark is the sin I cannot hide but I see your arms of love oh I come just as I am. I come just as I am. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, 
God's grace, grace that is greater than all my sin. There is a hill where pardon was paid. There is a king who died in my place. Now I am alive and I am redeemed. Out of the grave, forgiven and free. Let's raise it up, church. Grace, grace. God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all my sins. Amen. Amen. Jim. Renee Duran, Aaron Duran on the end. They come down and would like to join our church. Amen. <laughs> See, I told them. They said if they would have us, I said they would have you. So, <laughs> amen. We're so glad they're with us. Um, they, they come on a statement of faith. I always look over at Ron to help me with protocols, you know. Because, <laughs> so, uh, they come on a statement of faith. In fact, they're, they're coming from a Actually, can I say that? Is it okay? They're actually coming from our mother church. Buena Vista started this church how long ago? 50, 60? Something like that years ago. And um, they're, they've, there's another congregation in there now working in there, and they want to move their membership over here. And so we're glad to be able to do that uh, for them. Amen. So if you would, please, um, if everyone that receives them, say amen. amen. Um, we don't ever give the second vote. Um, and, but what I'd like you to do, if you would, please come down front, shake their hand, greet them, welcome them to the family of God. Amen? As we're dismissed. Um, are you going to sing another one? Yeah, we're going to sing you out. Sing though. another. Sing, sing us out. Amen. Come on down front and let's uh, greet them. Amen. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I would be set free Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me Let's do that again. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. All right, man, I'm not going to sing. Let's jam on the chorus. Here we go. <laughs> 